DICE just revealed their Tides of War roadmap for the first few months of Battlefield 5's life cycle, and it makes me even more worried than prior to the show and tell based on two previous EA games that also provided a free DLC live service model with Titanfall 2 and Star Wars Battlefront 2. Let's dive into what we could expect even after DICE delayed the launch date in order to polish up the game after the beta, I mean demo that they rolled out back in September. The game will launch in less than a month with eight multiplayer maps, although considering the amount of 24-7 servers that I always see, most most of the Battlefield community doesn't seem to mind playing the same map ad nauseum, but for me, no thanks. Let me have some variety for fuck's sake. I can't stand playing the same shit for hours on end. Anyways, it also will contain four war stories for the single player campaign, 35-ish weapons, and six game modes, all of which is less than the previous game, Battlefield 1, in every single category. However, unlike Battlefield 1 with its extra $50 premium pass for future content, Battlefield 5 has no paid DLC and will instead drip feed content via a live service model. Despite that there's somehow even less content than the empty void that was Battlefield 1 when it shipped, the hope remained that Battlefield 5 would eventually eclipse its predecessor since there will be free updates as the Tides of War live service buzzword adds to the base of it over time. That hope was evaporated when we saw how this whole situation is going to play out, especially given the track record I mentioned earlier, but we'll touch on later. In the first two months of the game's launch, we could see that there will be one additional War Stories mission, which still puts it under the six that came with Battlefield 1. There will also be a new map called Panzerstorm that encompasses tank battles in Belgium. In addition, a practice range will be coming for the first time since Battlefield 4 for those people that can't figure out that you could just join empty servers in order to do shit without affecting actual matches, and vehicle customization, which was something in the reveal trailer back in May, yet it won't be ready for launch somehow. The next section, labeled Lightning Strikes, that will run from January until March of 2019, 19 includes the addition of the co-op combined arms mode also talked about during the reveal that's matthew mcconaughey not ready for launch along with two new game modes and by new i mean bastardized versions of rush and squad conquest for people that mistakenly think that battlefield is a competitive game how's that incursions going by the way and lastly a grand operations mission which will tie together two different sets of a single map operations lastly four plus months after launch in march with trial by fire is finally the battle royale mode firestorm a new multiplayer map set in greece a new co-op mission and an unnamed game mode down in tiny print at the bottom and then later in reddit post dice confirmed monthly patches are going to happen which may or may not contain new weapons and vehicles so at least there's lots of weasel words in case they don't deliver which may not actually happen given all of the changes that they've made since the beta i mean demo and us the community haven't really gotten to test it out yet to see whether or not they're headed in the right direction so of course if shit gets fucked up then they're not going to put in some brand new beepity bops for us although that seems pretty packed like a druish princess let's contrast this with the previous game by the march time frame of battlefield one we are going to have the same total number of free maps with 10 more campaign missions but no practice range nor co-op mode nor battle royale mode and no new game modes however march also added for premium pass members an entire dlc pack with they shall not pass that contained four new maps six new weapons a new vehicle a new elite class and a new game mode among other things yes even though we're paying less with battlefield 5 we're still getting much less in terms of post-release content Content. Why the fuck would anyone buy the game in November, considering that it won't be nearly a full product until at least March, or at the very earliest in January with the co-op mode? It really doesn't make any sense to me, especially given the state of the multiplayer during the demo that needed a lot of work, and DICE has been busy overhauling a lot of the systems in the game, yet we're not going to get an additional test to see if we still like it or not. While a drip feed of content is certainly more welcome over the vast amounts of nothingness given to the non-premium members during Battlefield 1's release as their own only four new and by new i mean variants of already existing weapons added until nearly 18 months later after all of the dlc had been completed or in the case of apocalypse phoned in to go along with giving away two dlc maps for free at the start of the second year with more during the shock operations update nearly 20 months in and integrating that one new game mode from they shall not pass into the vanilla maps too little too late as although you can get the premium pass for free right now until halloween there's almost 
no point when the next game is right around the corner with the only players on the game right now being those hardcore fans that probably already have premium anyways. The point of a live service is to keep your audience engaged and that audience is non-existent after lacking giving them content in Battlefield 1, which I hope is going to be solved with the Tides of War in Battlefield 5. However, I don't hold out much hope for the live service model delivering both quality and quantity as we can look at a current failure of how DICE is implementing it with Star Wars Battlefront 2. Although it's important to mention, I'm not going to delve into the details of the star card system and how these microtransactions were supposed to support the free DLC model of the game, yet as we all know, that system bastardized the entire multiplayer portion of the game. Instead, we can talk about what the game has actually delivered in the 11 months since launch. Only two new characters, seven maps, of which most are only playable in either one or two game modes, zero new weapons, three new ships, five new game modes that are mostly derivatives of already existing ones, and three campaign missions because the single player was so devoid of anything that it was necessary to fill plot holes created by a movie that released a month after the game did. That's a paltry amount of content for an almost entire year worth of updates, and granted, I'm sure that the overhaul of the progression system due to the Star Wars themed casino masquerading as a video game causing resources to be funneled away from actually making new content, but that is much less content than the prior Star Wars Battlefront reboot game, which was somehow even more of an incomplete husk of a game than Battlefield 1 was compared to Battlefield 4 and Battlefield Hardline. The majority of fans of the game that weren't scared off after the pay-to-win controversy that stirred governments into actually getting involved certainly aren't thrilled about how this post-launch content is handled. Another EA example of free DLC I can point to is Titanfall 2. Now, this isn't a critique of the game. Titanfall 2 is excellent. However, the post-launch support for the game, while monthly in cadence, which more mimics what Battlefield 5 is actually trying to do, was lacking in quality for all of the quantity it supposedly was giving. Before the plug was pulled on new development of the game exactly one year after its supercalifragilisticexpialatrocious launch window to work on some other bullshit that EA can milk for money, we only got one new Titan, two weapons which were just ported from the original game, six maps, five of which were ported from the original game, not even reskins, along with six new maps for the added live fire game mode that are actually just fucking tiny maps, they're not even as big as a regular multiplayer map could be, and one Colosseum map that you couldn't even play unless you got RNG to ticket, as well as almost 20 new game modes, but most of which were either limited time, slight alterations of existing ones, or ported over from the original game like Mark for Death and Frontier Defense. Considering that the original game had 15 vanilla maps and Titanfall 2 launched with only 9, at the end of one year, we only made it back to the same number of 15. The original game had the paid for season pass, but it added a shitload more in terms of content to the game that's completely absent in Titanfall 2. Now, I am not advocating for a paid-for DLC instead of free DLC model. That would be fucking idiotic. But I'm merely pointing out that the track record of EA games offering live services is very fucking lackluster. DICE themselves haven't delivered on Star Wars Battlefront 2 and have reassured people that it's not going to do the same with Battlefield because it owns the IP, to which then I call bullshit because Respawn owns the Titanfall IP, yet their free DLC model is riddled with half-ass efforts of taking the easy way out with content and ideas from their previous game realized in their sequel. I've already seen tons of people getting excited about maybe getting maps from Battlefield 1942 and 1943 in the game, and if history is any indication, unless it's easy to take those pre-Frostbite maps into the fold, we're probably going to get stuck with Wake Island for the 8th, yes you heard me right, the 8th motherfucking time that this map has been put in a Battlefield game. They should call it fucking 8th Island at this point. Battlefield 5 is set on shipping a shell of a game with even less on launch than previous titles with the promise that it's going to be filled as the year goes along with the tides of war and i'm hoping that dice proves me wrong but so far the track record isn't on their side and has me more than just a little bit concerned what do you think about the battlefield 5 roadmap reveal let me know down below i've been the schwanz 27 making like a tree and getting the fuck out of here until next time